This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Chris Overholt. He is the president and CEO of Overactive Media. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, OAM on the TSX Venture and OAMCF on the OTCQB. And Overactive Media will be presenting and also participating on a panel at our upcoming in-person investor conference, the Planet Microcap Showcase, happening May 3rd through the 5th, 2022 at Bally's Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. For more information to register and meet Chris, please go to planetmicrocapshowcase.com. And with that, Chris, how you doing, man? What a cool, stu- cool studio, I'm, dude. I'm really well. I couldn't have done that better myself. And Vegas is one of my best cities, so I look forward to seeing everybody. Absolutely, man. Well, last time, uh, well, before we get into an update, because we just did an interview about a few months ago, can you give us that real quick, that one or two lines that best describes Overactive Media? Yeah, we are building a 21st century sports media and entertainment company for today's generation of fans. And uh, we take our origins in our esports investments. Uh, We've made big investments with the key publishers in the world, Riot, Activision, Blizzard, in those franchise leagues. And we take that on... uh, we started uh, with that effort in 2018 and, and took it on largely with, um, with the idea in mind that over some measure of time, esports was going to come to look like traditional sports in many ways for this generation. And we wanted to be invested in a model that looked and felt like traditional sports. So uh, today um, we, uh, we announced our, our Q4 and our annual earnings. And I'm pleased to tell everybody on this call and you that we've had, uh, we've had a great year, a real a real breakout year, I think, for our organization. So excited to be with you today. All right. Well, t- let's let's go. Let's go. Let's uh, learn a little bit more. So we last an interview together. I published that on December 7, 2021. So let's get that update. Or I mean, yeah, better, better yet, yeah, let's hear. Let's you hear know, the what, results. What are the headlines? Um, you know, our uh, start with our fourth quarter. We did total revenue of uh, 5.3 million, which is a 340 percent year over year increase for the Q4 by compared to 2020. And so for the full year in 2021, we reported an adjusted EBITDA of just, uh, just about $7 million loss. And that's a 35% uh, improvement in, uh, in our business year over year. So the business is going the right way. Um, the, again, the high margin business that we're in uh, is starting to demonstrate that it scales in the ways that we imagined when we started the company in 2018. And, and our thesis, uh, again, now close to four years ago is becoming a reality. Very good. And what would you say are some of the main drivers of, of some of the growth that you mentioned? Yeah. So look, we had three fundamental principles when we started the company. And the first and most important was that partnering directly with the publishers who own the IP would be the best opportunity for monetization for team owners. And so again, we took our position that we should invest in these franchise leagues, leagues that by design and by business model share revenue with us as audience grows, as those leagues grow their marketing partnership business and their media rights deals. And again, that's starting to show up in a real way in our, in our revenues. Uh, we thought that over, over time, again, in due course, revenue would correspond to growing audience for these game titles. And, um, and for all of those reasons, that's starting to manifest itself. And then over time, we thought that we would see, like in traditional sport, a value attached to the scarcity of these franchises in these leagues. And in this past year, we've seen the sale in the secondary market. As one example of the LEC team, FC Shaka, uh, they sold their LEC position in League of Legends uh, where we're, we were partnered with them in the European League. Uh, and that deal was done for orders of magnitude close to 300% more than we paid for our franchise. So again, that notion that these esports franchises will grow to be of value based on their scarcity in a similar fashion to any of the professional sports teams in the major leagues seems again to be manifesting. So how do you target where you want to go? You know, I mean, I know you've been in the business for a while. We did, we found that on our last interview and from some of the presentations you've done, you know, so are you going after kind of the low hanging fruit and some of the relationships that you're leveraging or do you have certain criteria that you're looking for? Yeah. So it's a great question because it speaks to kind of the growth of the organization broadly. You know, first, Again, we really believe in Riot Games. We really believe in Activision Blizzard. And um, it's an easy thing for us to say because we know the inside look of that, those organizations. We know the people that are attached to it, the vision that they have for their leagues. And we see the way it's manifesting in our PL. So again, an easy statement to make for us. And so 
you know, we just announced last week that we'll enter the Valorant community, and um, uh, that's new for us. Uh, we've resisted uh, getting involved with with game titles that don't have franchise league opportunities, but candidly, we think that's probably where Riot's going to go with this, and we wanted to make sure that we were committed to the community and committed to the opportunity around Valorant. Today, it's arguably the fastest growing game of the world. Um, the community around Valorant is amazing, and, and so... We took the step to secure a roster. We entered the Valorant space last week, and we'll see how it goes. But if Riot launches a franchise league, you can count on us being interested in that. In the broader context of the business, again, we're a sports, media, and entertainment company, and that can be defined in these times quite broadly, as you would imagine. But mostly we look for products and service opportunities that will serve today's generation of fans. I would say that's our criteria. And so, again, that leaves us open to all matter of consideration as we think about M&A, and we're certainly engaged in those conversations now. Very good. Well, to close this out here, uh, from what you can tell us, what, what are those one or two things that folks should understand about the business moving forward for the rest of 2022? Yeah, as I mentioned already, only that, um, you know, we think the best opportunity to grow our business was and is and remains to be partnered with the biggest publishers. It gives us an inside track to the industry in many ways. As you can imagine, over four years, we've built incredible relationship there. And so that hasn't changed for us. That first principle of partnering with the big publishers uh, remains an important element of our business. But we're also excited to be getting back to live events this year. Uh, we, uh, we've already announced that we'll be hosting Major 3 here in Toronto in the early days of June around our Toronto Ultra and the Call of Duty League. Um, we expect to be hosting uh, our uh, the third tournament in the season that is related to Overwatch as they relaunch Overwatch against Overwatch 2. And we're excited about all the potential of that game and rebasing of that league around Overwatch 2. Um, you know, we're bullish on live events generally. There's nothing more ironic to me than the fact that, you know, a community of fans that were built out of an online experience love nothing more than to be together to celebrate what they love. And so... We're really excited about those two big events here in Toronto. And you know, broadly speaking, our strategy uh, for overactive media is to build out our entertainment proposition out around the, the venue that we've, um, we've presented to the world. Uh, our intention to build a 7,000 seat performance venue here in the city of Toronto is in our estimation, not only a game changer for the city and for the country and for the music and entertainment scene here, uh, but for esports, and uh, it'll be a, a, a pillar of uh, of our core business here at Overactive Media, but it equally give Toronto a chance, I think, to emerge as a global hub for esports. So um, we're excited about all of those things and everything that lies ahead of us in the next several months here in particular. Very good. Well, Chris, where can our audience go and find more information on Overactive Media? Yeah, overactivemedia.gg, uh, our investor relations section would uh, would present all of the latest business information, which we just posted last night and again this morning. Uh, our investor call, uh, again, that we completed early this morning is already there. And uh, all the information that would keep all of our fans and investors up to date is available at overactivemedia.gg. Love it. Chris, thank you so much for joining me today. Really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. I'll see you in Vegas. Cool, man. Take care. Thanks. See you.